So I've been learning a lot about torpedo solutions lately, and I thought I would just collate all of that information together in one place. There are a lot of people in this community who are much smarter and more well-read than I am, and it's a very interesting community because it's this like synthesis of gamer strats and like actual historical research. But anyway, it might seem intimidating to turn on that hardcore aiming mode and do your own torpedo solutions all the time, but I can assure you it's it's not that difficult and once you start getting hits, it is quite satisfying. So to get a torpedo solution, there are three pieces of data we need. We need the velocity of the target, its course or our position relative to its course, and the range. We'll start with the range because the range is the simplest and also the most historically accurate. So the first thing you have to do is identify the target. Um, this is an Empire Bell. You will learn, you'll learn what the ships look like. But the Empire Bell just has these two masts with the cable strung between them. The Empire Explorer has a third mast coming up from like where the bridge is. Um, this guy doesn't have that. And then the Empire Tower has like two uh, butt masts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to say it. The Empire Tower is also generally larger and uh, higher in the water. But anyway, this is an Empire Bell, and that gives us some information. Apparently we're at war with France now. Now, the Empire ships are not built to a specific class design like the Liberties are, so there is some inaccuracy built in. That's what this fine print says. Um, errors reaching 20% in like the length and the height of the mast, which does matter because that's how we determine range and speed and stuff like that. But generally speaking in this game, the best way to deal with inaccuracies, errors, is just to be closer because the closer you are and the more perpendicular you are, the more error the solution can absorb. So for range, this isn't a battleship, or anything so we don't have like a stereoscopic or a coincidence rangefinder but we do have with knowing the height of the ship's masts which you don't have to know it's it's computed in the game for you you um you change this angle the the image has been split so you set the ghost ship on top of the real ship's masts and then you set that angle and then based on the height of the masts of the ship that you've identified, it gives you the range. In this case, just over six kilometers. That is a historical method. There's actually like a little dial. I don't think the Type 7 has it, but there's one in the Type 2 in this game. On your screen now should be an American rangefinder dial, which is more legible for us English speakers. Basically, the angle that you set this thing at um, moves those discs, and then each height of mast corresponds with a range. So, like, it could be a 10 foot mast at a thousand yards, or it could be a 20 foot mast at 2,000 yards. You get the idea. Now, before those rangefinder dials were available, you would um, pull out your 1938 issue, whoop, uh, Windows calculator. Very historically accurate. Um, and you just measure the height of the ship in milliradians. That's what the scale is on the left, by the way. In, in the vanilla version of this game, the milliradians scale is not accurate. Don't use it. This periscope view with the widescreen and everything, this is a mod, which makes the milliradians scale actually work. But you don't have to do this. You can just use the the ghost image as I just covered. But if you're feeling immersive, you can try this method where you measure the height of the ship in milliradians. This reads, let's say, 35 milliradians. Um, now we are actually at 10x magnification. This is what the ship actually looks like. So you have to divide that number by 10, which means we are at 3.5 milliradians. Now, the Empire Bell 
has a mast height of 21.7 meters. So you just take the height of the masts in meters divided by the observed height of the masts in milliradians, which is 3.5, and that gives you the distance in kilometers, 6.2, which that's the same thing we determined with the other method. There is, I believe, like a very small degree of error in this calculation. It's not completely perfect, but for the numbers that we're working with, it doesn't really matter. But again, that's basically just recreational because the game has the uh, ghost image system built in. So you can just do this. And the range has closed. And he's now... She's now coming up to like 40 milliradians, so. Um, and that's the other thing you have to watch out for. Like if you're not matching their course and speed, then things will be changing on you while you're doing your calculations. So that is range. Um, when it comes to course and speed, one thing you can do, again, if you're feeling immersive, is to actually plot the ship's movements on a map, especially if the ship it, like this one is just in the open ocean moving in a straight line. This also applies to convoys because a lot of times if you can derive the course and speed of one ship in the convoy, that's the course and speed of the entire convoy as long as the convoy doesn't change course, as long as they don't get alerted. But if you want to actually plot the ship's movements on your map, um, you just take a bearing so and, and a range. So you, you do your range finding. 4.7 kilometers and then the bearing is let's say 192 so you can go to the map and if we just ignore that I have context visualization turned on you would then go to the map and go at 19 well apparently it's a little less than 192 let's say I think it's 192 and what did I say? 4.7? So now I know where I am and I know where the ship is relative to me at this point in time. So then imagine you continue shadowing this ship for like another 20 minutes or something and you get another bearing and range. So you can plot it again up here. And if the ship is going at a consistent course and speed, then this will give you all the data you need. Um, so then you draw from this point to this point, and then you know the ship is on a course of three, four, nine point five, I guess. And in that amount of time, if you're timing it with the chronometer, it has traveled 16 kilometers, so that can give you the speed as well. But you do not have to do that. Now, historically, there also would have been calculating disks and methods like uh, Ausdampfverfahren or Auswanderungsgefahren. I don't know what any of that means. If you're interested, go to tvre.org. There's a lot of good information there. Basically, it's all about like observing the rate of change of the bearing and then playing games with your own course and speed and doing a whole bunch of trigonometry. We're not doing that here. The method that U-Boat has you use to determine a ship's velocity is the so-called fixed wire method, which is also historical, but was kind of not used in all circumstances because it has certain limitations. Um, basically, I think you have to be stopped or pointed directly at or away from the target for it to actually work. Um, but that's not the case in this game for how it's modeled. So let me just open up the angle here a little bit. Okay, so to determine speed with the fixed wire method, you simply start the clock when the bow of the target crosses the line. Don't move the periscope at all. And then you stop the clock when the stern of the vessel crosses the line. So there we have a velocity of 5.9 knots. Now you might not always have the time to be able to do that. You can also just guesstimate 
the velocity by i, um, and also depending on the ship type, like what you know about what, what kind of speeds that ship is typically going at. Like most of these lone merchantmen are typically going somewhere around this six knots, seven knots, eight knots, maybe, because that's kind of what they're capable of. And in the identification book, it does tell you what speed the ship is capable of at maximum. So last but not least is angle on bow. Again, if the ship is on a consistent course and speed, um, you can determine this by plotting, right? So if we have this data point, and then we have another position we had back here somewhere, because we've been shadowing the ship for a while, let's imagine, then um, quite simply, you take the protractor from your boat to the current observed position to the previous position of the target. And then this line is the target's course and this line is from you to the target. And so you get 133.5. Um, you subtract that from 180. I believe this gives you 46.5 degrees for an angle on bow. Now, if you're playing with context visualization turned off, you can also just cheat with the protractor. You can just start at your boat, go to the target, and then do your best estimation of the target's course. And then the angle here, 50.1 degrees, that is the angle on bow. But again, that's basically cheating because you're using information that you shouldn't have. Here in the angle on bow, we would put in 50 is probably a little more than that now. And it's important to note, this is from the target's perspective. This is where you are from the perspective of the target. Um, you can also switch to this. I, I don't recommend it. This is historical. This is what's on the TDC right here, the green and the red um, for starboard and port. So if we look at the ship, we are to this ship's starboard side, but you do not have to plot any of this on the map. You can estimate AOB by eye. If you just sort of look at symmetrical features like these two funnels here, and eventually through experience, you will learn what various angles look like. However, a much easier thing to do is to wait until or put yourself at exactly 90 degrees, because it's very easy to see what exactly 90 degrees looks like, or exactly zero degrees, because like all of these symmetrical features, these funnels, the front of the bridge here, it's kind of hard to see because of the glare, but all the symmetrical features will line up exactly when you are at 90 degrees, and then you can put in that data point. But you're basically drawing a line between these two vessels. So if it changes by one degree, it changes by one degree for both of us. So one degree change in the bearing of the ship is one degree change in the angle on bow. I hope that makes sense. Right now, we are at exactly 90 degrees. So now the TDC will continue to track that depending on the change of this bearing. So now if you wanted to speed up again in order to get a more perpendicular torpedo hit, you don't want to shoot from when you are perpendicular. You want to shoot from a position where when the torpedo meets the target, it will be perpendicular, which means you want to be a little bit ahead of the target's beam. But if you drop back to the beam, like I just did, to exactly 90 degrees, then you can plug that into the TDC and it will continue to track it as the bearing changes. So if we start pulling ahead and the bearing starts decreasing, then you will see the AOB is also decreasing. So night is falling here, but there's another thing I want to show you. Just like you can exactly determine when you're at 90 degrees, you can also exactly determine when you're at zero degrees, and you can use this to determine the ship's actual course um, without having to plot it over time, assuming that it is like this ship is 
traveling in a straight line at a constant speed. Again, you can also do this with convoys because all of the ships in the convoy are going to be following the same course as long as the convoy isn't evading or alerted or moving around a coastline somewhere. That is one reason why escorts were often told to vary their course and speed relative to the convoy, because the escorts are on the outside, so you can just have a submarine out there watching the escort. And if the escort is on the same course and speed as the convoy, then that gives the whole game away. But that is the case in this game, where unless they are alerted, escorts will follow the exact same course and speed as the rest of the convoy. So you can derive the entire convoy's bearing from just one ship. But in this case, if we look here, and you can see the TDC has adjusted the angle on bow to zero, because that's where we are right now. And right now the masts are lined up, and that is two, two, eight, let's call it. Now, two, two, eight is a relative bearing, so this is yet another thing that needs to be explained. Um, in the compass tool here, the top number is the um, relative bearing, and the bottom number is the absolute bearing, you know, north, south, east, west. So I, I got a shot looking from the front of this ship back at 228 relative. Um, so if I put that here, that gives us an absolute bearing of 172, but that is the bearing looking backwards, so you need to invert it um, by 180 degrees, which then takes you to 352 as the ship's course. So the ship's true course then is 352. So then what you can do is you can set yourself up on a course, by the way, the bearings on course lines, that's yet another mod. A lot of mods involved here, including the um, decimal speed display mod that is actually extremely important, should just be base functionality, because otherwise you're trying to do all this with one significant digit for all these speeds, which is a real pain in the ass. But what you can do is set yourself up on that course that you observed, 352. And then all you have to do is look at where the ship is on the relative bearing. And you know that your course is parallel to it, as long as it's maintaining, again, a constant course and speed which means that the distance in degrees that the ship is away from 180 is the angle on bow. The other way to look at it is that you subtract 180 from the, um, the reading here. So this says 133, um, which is uh, 47 degrees away from 180. And the TDC continues to agree, um, although it is now on this side. So it's been tracking this whole time based on the change of the bearing of the ship. So you can also set yourself up on a directly opposite course or on a perpendicular course, and then use your relative bearing, do the math, and you will get a precise angle on bow. I keep mentioning the TDC, and how it keeps tracking movements, what I should say about the TDC is that you don't have to interact with it. But what you want to make sure that you're always doing is reporting your data to the officer who is on the TDC. Now, in the beta, there were some issues with the angle on bow was changing in the wrong direction um, as your bearing changed. And the uh, there were issues with the parallax setting. There were issues with the torpedo speed not changing when you change the speed on your torpedoes in this menu, but that's basically all fixed now. All you have to do is report your data to, um, in this case, Hoffman, and he'll take care of it. So as long as you don't have any little dialogue boxes here, the point is you don't have to interact with the TDC. And you also don't have to do all the complicated stuff I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you the 
aspect ratio method for calculating the angle on bow. Again, you don't have to do that. You can just estimate it visually, especially if you're at pretty close range, or you can do what I just showed you where you pull up at exactly 90 degrees or exactly ahead of the ship and use that to determine which way the ship is pointing. But if you want to do the aspect ratio calculations, then what you do is you pull out your good old 1938 issued Windows calculator. <laughs> um, or if you're really feeling immersive, you can find like an actual slide rule and some and some sign tables or something. The first thing you do is calculate the ship's aspect ratio. That is the ship's length divided by the mast height. So 101.7 meters divided by 21.7 meters. Okay. That gives us an aspect ratio of 4.687. The next step is to measure the ship's angular height, just like we did um, for doing range the old fashioned way. So you uh, put this bottom line at the water line or the horizon, probably the water line, but um, you then observe the height of the mast. In this case, it's 131 milliradians, let's call it. And again, you can't do that with the vanilla periscope. This is a modded periscope. The vanilla milliradians scale is not accurate, but in this mod, it is correct um, for the magnifications that are listed over here, which are not the magnifications. <laughs> it's all very complicated, but the maximum zoom level. Have I told you that yet that you can just right click? You can just right click to cycle. Anyway, looks like we're maybe pulling away a little bit because now it's more like 130 even, maybe 129. So we divide that by 10 because we are at 10x magnification. So that places us at 1.29, or sorry, 12.9 milliradians. So 12.9 milliradians, that is the angular height of the ship, divided by 17.45, because there are 17.45 milliradians in a degree. So that means the ship is 0 0.74 degrees tall. And then what we do is multiply this number by the aspect ratio, 4.68. Seven. Now this number is the ship's length in degrees, from our perspective, at this range, if it was perpendicular. We know that it's not perpendicular, but if we compare the length of the ship that we can observe to this length, then they're two sides of a triangle, right? So if we go here, it's 15 to the center, and then uh, 25, 26... 0.5, let's call it. Um, now again, we divide by 10 because we are at 10x magnification. So uh, 2.65 is the ship's length in degrees that we observe. That is the leg of the triangle that is facing us. So then we divide that by the hypotenuse, which is the length of the ship in degrees at this range, if it was perpendicular. So we divide that by 3.469. And this gives us a number that we perform an inverse sine on to give us an angle on bow of 49.8 degrees. The TDC is not quite in agreement with that, but uh, pretty close. And again, once you've calculated that, you put it into the TDC and it'll keep track of it. If this bearing changes, then it'll change. Like you can just watch it, right? If I go up here, like once the ship gets to this bearing, then the angle on bow will be 
um, 83 degrees to port. Uh, but the ship is here right now, so it's 49 degrees. Of course, that's if the ship maintains its present course. The other thing related to that is you always want your periscope to be centered on the target. I mean, obviously, when you're measuring and things, you can move it around. But for the purposes of shooting, this is the bearing that is being sent to the TDC. The TDC does a bunch of math on it and sends another bearing to the gyros. So if I point my periscope up here, then all else being equal, this is where the torpedo will hit, or at least try to hit. But anyway, as I have said a number of times by now, the best way to deal with such uncertainties is to uh, close the distance. The closer you are, the more error you can absorb. And I will demonstrate that now by showing how to shoot at an evading target. All right, so the ship has spotted us and it will proceed to alter its course and speed uh, back and forth. So in a case like this, all of the plotting work, all of the you know fixes that you took at exactly zero degrees or 90, it all goes out the window. So you just have to um, kind of make things up on the fly. Uh, we don't need to be at the periscope. Let's go to the Uzo instead. By the way, in this view, if you hold shift, you pan faster. <laughs> just, just another one of those things. So you can watch the ship turns to starboard. And now the game here, you don't want to shoot when the ship is perpendicular to you. You want to shoot when it's about to be perpendicular. And again, you want to be close, but there is such a thing as too close. I the torpedo, we might be almost too close. The torpedo arming distance is something like 300 meters. And right here, they have begun turning back. So what we want to do is set the angle on bow, not to the actual angle, but to the angle that it will be at in an amount of time. Um, you know, like somewhere in the middle of the torpedo's run. That's what you want. Um, so essentially setting an expected angle on bow because, you know, in the time it takes for the torpedo to get there, the ship will have turned. Like, ideally, the ship will turn past that angle at some point between when you fire and when the torpedo gets there. And you can see here, I've made a rookie mistake because my crosshairs are pointed at the bridge <laughs> and not at the center of the ship as they should be. But we have a hit anyway. Uh, not a very good hit, but a hit nonetheless. My speed estimate was maybe a little under. Um, she was starting to speed up a little bit, but that's still a decent hit. It's not quite all the way at the stern. So that's how you shoot at an abating target. Um, not when it's perpendicular, but when it is about to be perpendicular. And you set the angle on bow preemptively. And of course, it helps to be very close. In this case, um, about 500 meters away. Because the closer you are, the more error you can absorb. And isn't that just a lovely shot with the moon in the background? Uh, so that's about all that I know. If you know of any other tips and tricks, I would be curious to know about them. There's always more to learn. One final thing to say is that despite appearances, this is not a U-boat channel now. <laughs> At least I don't want it to be. If you are interested in U-boat, if you would like to see more of this action, I would encourage you to come hang out at twitch.tv forward slash 545454. If you aren't interested in U-Boat and somehow have persisted to the end of this video despite that fact, um, you'll be happy to know that although the next video about a non-U-Boat game is has been kicking my butt, it's finally in the editing phase, and it will be out shortly either way, I hope to see you again, and until then, 
good hunting.